Scottish Folk and Fairy Tales, The Old Lady of Little Dean. The old tower of Little Dean and Tweeside had long been haunted by the spirit of an old lady, once its mistress, who had been covetous and grasping woman and oppressive to the poor. Tradition averred that she had amassed a large sum of money by thrift or extortion, and now could not rest in her grave because of it. Spite of its ghost, however, Little Dean Tower was inhabited by a laird and his family who found no fault with their place of abode, and were not much troubled by thoughts of the supernatural world. One Saturday he evening, however, a servant girl, who was cleaning shoes by the kitchen by herself, suddenly observed an elf light shining on the floor. While she gazed on it, it disappeared, and in its place stood an old woman wrapped in a brown cloak, who muttered something about being cold, and asked if she could warm herself by the fire. The girl readily consented, and seeing that her visitor's shoes were wet, and her toes were peeping out and blue from the cold at their tips, she good-naturedly offered to dry and clean the shoes, and did so. The old lady, touched by this attention, confessed herself frankly to be the apparition that haunted the house. "'My gold wouldn't let me rest,' she said, "'but I'll tell you where it is, lies. This is, however, the lowest step of the tower stairs. Take the laird there and tell him what I tell you now. Then dig up the treasure and put it in his hands, and tell him to part it into two shares. One share let him keep, for he is the master here now, and the other share he must part again and give to you, for you are the kind lassie, and a true and half, and he must give a poor to the poor of Maxton, and the old folk, and the fatherless, and the barons, and let them have it who need it the most. Do this, and I shall rest in my grave, and as I have not rested yet, and never will I give this trouble any, this house any more trouble, until the day of doom. And the girl rubbed her eyes and looked again, and behold, the old woman was gone. The next morning, the young servant took her master to the spot which he had indicated to her, and told him what had taken place. The stone was removed, and the treasure discovered, and divided according to the instructions given. The laird, being blessed with a goodly family of sturdy lads and smiling maidens, found no difficulty in disposing his share. The servant girl, so richly dowered, found a good husband later on as the years had passed, and the poor of Maxton, for the first time in their lives, blessed the old lady of Little Dean, and never was the ancient travel tower troubled again by the, any ghost or apparition. The second tale, The Ladies of Bow Brig Sky. The same locality supplies us with another legend. About a, half a mile to the east of Maxton, a small rivulet runs across the turnpike road at a spot called Bow Brig Sky. Now, the bridge lies in a triangular field in which, for nearly a century, it was averred that the form of two ladies dressed in white might be seen pacing up and down. Night after night, people of the neighborhood used to come to watch them, and curiosity brought many f from a great distance. The figures were always to be seen at dusk, and they walked arm in arm, precisely in the same spot at the ground, till morning light. Mr. Wilkie adds that about twelve years before this time he, of noting down this story, while some workmen were repairing an old road, they took up a large flat stones upon which foot passengers crossed the burn, and found beneath them skeletons of two women lying side by side. After this discovery, Bowbrig Sky ladies were never seen again to walk in the three-corner field. Mr. Wilkie says further that he received from this account a gentleman who had seen examining the skeletons had added that he believed that these two ladies were the sisters of the former Laird of Little Dean. Their brother is said to have killed them in a fit of passion because they interfered to protect him from the ill usage of a woman, of a young lady he had met at Bowbrig Sky, and he placed their bodies upon the bridge and lowered flat stones to prevent their discovery. Some years later, he met with his own death in the same fatal spot while riding his dogs. He fell over a bray opposite to the bridge and was found lying dead by the Twee side. Tradition identifies him as Laird Harry Gillis, whose adventure in hunting had already been related.